All right, hello guys. Welcome to Rifle Roast 4. Today we have quite a lot of different guns to go over. We're going to be going over a lot of more vintage style guns, a lot of clone guns. Uh, but again, keep in mind, regardless of why you have your gun, I'm always going to judge it based off of a utility t standpoint. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. Guns are very expensive tools, okay? I'm an economics major, so I care a lot about making sure your resources are allocated efficiently. I want to make sure that you guys have guns that actually work work for you oh my gosh no notifications from work good grief it's friday leave me alone anyway so today we're going to start off with a rifle from rippers tv okay he's been on this uh he's been on this segment before really nice guy really cool guy he recently made this ar-15 i can't imagine what ar or excuse me what movie inspired this i just i can't put my finger on it um he's got a mini acog on top the 1.5x which is a very interesting choice uh let's look at that right there he's also got a streamlight in a clamp this is literally exactly what what I have on my rifle as well. I also have a streamlight in a clamp. He's also got a really cool, fun paint job. He's also got a retro magazine. I mean, we all know the P mag is a uh, perfect, but those are fun. I, I might get one one day just for the aesthetic. He's got a sling as well. So by all appearances, this rifle, even though it's a retro, he's kind of not necessarily clone correct, but uh, clone adjacent. <laughs> even though he's going for that, he's still got a rifle that is very, very functional. But let's look. We, we have a problem, though. We have a problem, and I don't know why. I don't know why this keeps happening, but look at the placement of this light. This light placement only makes sense if you're left-handed. <sighs> Rippers TV, sorry, dude, your mom, she's uh, she's at the Bohemian Grove, you know, and she's a witch, so we all know what needs to happen to her. But uh, other than that, though, I really like this gun. This would definitely fit sort of the GPR category. Let's talk about the stock, okay? The stock's actually really fun. It resembles the Car 15 stock, but notice it's got uh, QD sling cups in there. I really love stuff like this, something that adds sort of a vintage flair. Like, this, this stock is definitely very vintage, but it's still very functional. It's got everything you would want in a stock so really really like that i might do that when i uh, build my sbr which may or may not ever happen but the mini acog is an interesting choice to me um i'm not sure if this optic is relevant anymore for a few reasons one is that 1.5 x i don't think gets like i don't think you have the right to say you have magnification on your gun and if you're building a general purpose rifle a gpr it needs to have magnification in my opinion 2.5 x is kind of the minimum for that uh, preferably you're gonna have uh four or five x three x um one and a half x doesn't really count so what you kind of get is a is a red dot that gives you a headache um, I've never used a mini ACOG, so I'm just going off of what it would look like in theory. Uh, maybe I would shoot this and I'd be completely wrong. Maybe I'd like it. Uh, but overall, I mean, this is definitely not his only AR. I know he's got a GPR that's actually very good that we talked about a few videos ago. Uh, this is definitely more of a range toy. But what I do like about it is that you could sort of field this gun, so to speak. Like if you have a buddy, it's the end of the world, you want him to have an AR, this is something you could loan out to someone and it's plenty effective and it's probably relatively easy to use. Overall, I like this gun. Uh, again, I don't really care about guns that are clone correct. That's not really my thing. I do like front sight bases. I think those are fun, but I mean, overall, though, I really do like this gun. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so these guns, this set of guns comes from an uh, acquaintance of mine. Really cool guy. Let's just say these guns, uh, they get put to use. And that's all I'm going to leave it at. Uh, let's start, let's go up from the top. This is definitely, again, a GPR, right? You got an LPVO, which is by far not my favorite. I am getting a little warmer to the idea of LPVOs, but... I'm still not quite there yet. I do like it, though. Uh, you have your etched reticle, um, so that's nice. This is a primary arms LPVO. It's a lower-end LPVO. As far as LPVOs go, though, I mean, this is going to be totally functional. Um, this is weird. You've got a pistol light on here. I imagine he sort of probably just had this lying around, and everyone knows that every rifle needs a light, and so... He probably just threw it on there because that's all he had. That's totally fine. Obviously, a rifle light's going to not only look better, it's also going to function a little better. But, hey, this is this is going to work just fine for now until he gets that in. 
quad rails are interesting okay so he's got a quad rail on here it's a midwest quad which is probably the one i would get if i was going to get a quad rail um quad rails obviously are highly inefficient when it comes to weight right because back here i mean obviously he's put sort of covers back here i imagine he likes to grip the rifle back here uh but nothing has ever gone on these rear um slots back here um so they're very inefficient with metal um they're not as efficient as m lock it's probably going to be a lot more sturdy over time and if you ever have shot like 200 rounds straight through your ar you know that ar 15s can get really hot especially if they have an m lock handguard one of the ways of mitigating that is having a quad rail a quad rail is going to stand up to heat a lot better just because there's more material to absorb it so um so it's not the worst thing in the world i don't i don't dislike them as much as i used to i think they're kind of cool they look good but if you hike straight up a mountain with one you're gonna wish you had an m lock rail that's just how it is um he's got I believe this is the BCM grip again, not my favorite. Literally everyone in my community has one of these for some reason. Whatever, it's fine. The grip angle's good. Uh, arrow lover, which is great. He's got the Magpul uh, SLK, which is kind of a strange stock choice. Um, he's clearly made it work for him. By the way, he's painted this, it appears. Maybe he hasn't painted the upper, but he's painted most of this gun. And uh, he's got a sling, so... The, the stock's kind of weird. It's not a bad choice. It's just kind of strange. I think a CTR stock or uh, just a normal SL stock would be a better fit. But, hey, this is fine. This is a, kind of a weird GPR, but totally very functional, very applicable. Um, overall, I, I like this. I think it's a little strange. But um, I think the other thing here, someone please correct me if I'm wrong. This looks like a Lancer mag that's purple, but then he painted it green. Um, which is interesting. I, it's not bad. <laughs> it's just kind of interesting. So anyway, let's move on to the AK. AKs are weird. Okay. So again, in the definition of what a general purpose rifle is, part of that is having magnification. Getting a magnified optic on an AK seems extremely difficult. So if you own an AK, I understand uh, not going with that. I personally would like to see a micro red dot up here. A Romeo 5, aim point T2 family. Um, that would, I think, make a lot of sense. That's probably what I would do if I had an AK. You're just kind of going to have to just give up the fact that you're probably not going to get a magnified optic on here. Um, I do like that, you know, he's got wood furniture along with this M lock so he can mount the BCM grip the right way. Again, the reason why this is the correct way to do it is because it creates a cup right here for you to put your hand, makes it very comfortable to shoot. Um, so I like that he's got that mounted the right way. It shows that he has taste. I also like, you know, he's having a little bit of fun with his AK. And if you have an AK, you should do things like this, right? He's added, he's Greek Orthodox. He added the, uh, the cross there. Really like it. I mean, he's got a sling. Um, I would say he should add a light, you know, get a cantilevered light mount and, and mount a stream light on this. Um, that way it's still a little bit more functional overall though. It's a fun gun. I mean, it's definitely more, more of a toy. I mean, obviously it's a firearm. I'm sure, you know, again, if you're looking to loan a rifle to somebody, this isn't a bad choice. Um, I think that's a 40 round mag as well. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know AKs that well overall though. I really do like his AK. Last but not least here, we have the CZ P01. I know basically nothing about CZ handguns because I'm a Glock fanboy. Um, it holds 15 rounds. I mean, I don't know. It's probably fine. I think he probably bought this to match his AK, you know, sort of the Euro vibe. That's fine. It's got wood grips. I'm sure it shoots plenty well. Um, I would say when it comes to what handgun you select, Think about the guys in your neighborhood that you're going to be working with if things go south. What handguns do they have? Are they, heaven forbid, using the SIG M17? Are they using Glock? Are they using 1911s even? Are they using Smith & Wessons? I would say just get whatever handgun they're having. Uh, that way you guys can, you can share stuff. You can share mags. You can share ammo, right? Um, so anyway, I really, you know, that handgun's fine. I'm kind of neutral on it. So overall, uh, you know who you are. I really like your guns. I would just paint the upper and just get a light on light on both of these a better light um, let's move on to the next moving down the line here this rifle is extremely generic so we won't spend too much time on it i would say uh this gun isn't even done um i guarantee you this gun probably came with the moe grip i don't know of that many people that like the moe grip i think people are kind of firmly divided in sort of the bcm magpul k2 category or the retro a2 grip 
Um, so it's whatever you prefer. This is kind of a weird uh, grip choice nowadays. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's just very generic. The Magpul CTR stock, again, as a fan of the Magpul CTR stock, this is the most NPC AR stock there is. It's good. There's a reason why. But it is very NPC. I don't think I'd change it. I'm just pointing it out. Um, it looks like we've got an arrow receiver set, arrow bolt carrier group, which is a totally good choice. This optic uh, is a little strange. So this is an older model Hollow Sun. I think it's the 401 or something like that. Um, a lot more like an Aimpoint Comp M4. <sighs> older Hollow Suns, man. I know new Hollow Suns work pretty well. My 407C, I've taken it on an armed expedition or two. Um, it's worked great so far. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not sure if I like giant red dots because the problem is, is that mounting a magnifier behind them, not only does it make the whole system really heavy, it also is pretty difficult to do. Um, and in my opinion, if you're going to have a rifle with a red dot and it, it's a 16 inch gun, you really should have a magnifier with it. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of this red dot. If I'm the owner of this AR, what I do is I put a K2 grip on there. I probably sell this and get a 403R um, or 403B, one of those two. Um, I'd probably get the Hollow Sun or Vortex magnifier and put that behind it. Um, the rail on this is fine. I mean, it looks a little wonky. I mean, you don't have any pick rail right here. Um, not that big of a deal. It's just if you want to mount a light tape switch, you can't do it up there. This rail is a little weird. There's nothing wrong with it. It just looks a little, looks a little Delta Team Tactical, if you know what I mean. Um, 16 inch barrel. Uh, let me see. Oh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's a carbine profile barrel. Uh, not the worst thing in the world, but it is a little weird. Um, A2 birdcage, which is fine. Overall, I just don't think this gun is done. It needs a sling, it needs a paint job, it needs a light, it needs magnification. Uh, once you get those things on there, though, this thing's good to go. I'd say if you want to stick with this optic, I would say at least get some Magpul and bus sights. Um, it's never a bad idea to have backup irons, especially when they're relatively affordable. Lights are cheap now, should really put that on there as well. Let's move on to the next gun. All right, this is fun. Okay, so what do we have? We have the B5 stock on here, um, which is uh, fine, I guess. I don't know. It feels a little cheap, in my opinion. Uh, but I don't know. It's fine. It's got everything you need a stock to have. K2 grip. Thank you. Finally, a human being with a K2 grip on their AR. Thank freaking goodness. Very good. Magpul 20 round P mag, which for a rifle uh, like this, that makes perfect sense. Lightweight makes it so you can go prone a little easier. Magpul uh, 20 round P mags are just fun. Uh, arrow precision build as well, which is totally fine. Um, <laughs> dick mod, key mod, rail. Uh, whatever, you know, I don't know. It's definitely not something I would do. But if you already have it set up, I mean, and, and you don't plan on changing it, there's no real reason to go over to M-Lock. Clearly, this is sort of a more budget-minded SPR kind of build, which is fine. I've actually been thinking about making, like, a budget SPR out of my spare parts. I mean, it's not a bad idea. I mean, you get a relatively longer barrel. You get a nice scope on top. You get a, you get a bipod. Um... If you spend a lot of money on a SPR, it can still kind of behave like a GPR. Like you can put a red dot on top. If you spend money in the right places, it can still be lightweight. Honestly, if I make an SPR, it's probably going to be more of an emplaced weapon. Like meaning it's going to have a heavy 20 inch barrel. It's going to have a heavy bipod. It's going to have a heavy rail. It's going to have a heavy scope. Uh, definitely the kind of thing you take to the top of a mountain and just kind of leave there. Um, and so that's, that's the application of this gun. Definitely a lot more niche than your normal AR. So definitely shouldn't be your first build. But if you want to, you know, test your, your limits with uh, 5556. Five, if you want to put in some 77 grain, shoot it out of a 20 inch barrel with a scope, I'd go for it. This is a Nikon Pro Staff. They don't make these anymore. Um, so it's kind of fun to see that. I'm sure it's great. I don't know a whole lot about Nikon scopes since they haven't been made for a while. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure that's a good choice. Nikon makes good stuff. So overall, this gun's fun. Again, sling. Um, I don't know if you need a light on an SPR like this, so maybe don't worry about the light, but definitely give this thing a paint job. There's nothing cooler than a painted sniper rifle. Okay, so definitely give this thing a nice coat of paint. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so for my American brothers and sisters, let's be honest, just brothers. I know oftentimes we're embarrassed of our country. We think about maybe moving somewhere else. We think, oh, things are so bad here. This uh, collection on your screen is from one of our neighbors up north in Canada land. So this is the best they can really do up there. So, uh, you know, thank, thank Allah. 
so to speak, that you live in America. Anyway, let's go down our Canadian Friends collection here. At the very top, we have a Browning BPS uh, 12 gauge that I believe takes uh, three and a half inch shells. Really cool. Obviously, literally every gun here is for hunting, okay? Um, and in, after I'm done going over them, I'll tell you which one I would sort of make into a try-hard rifle. <laughs> uh, right below that, we have a Browning AB330-6. Below that, we have a Savage Mark II Bolt in 22. Very, very fun. Below that, we have a Beretta 3901. Very good. Very bougie. Very nice. Gucci. Uh, very, very good. 3-inch shell. 12-gauge. Very good. And then there's a Savage Axis. So, here's the deal. If you live in the Canadian wilderness, and this probably applies if you live in like the Alaskan wilderness too, um, it's skeptical that even if the world ended, would you even need a tactical type gun, right? Like if the world ended, if the nukes hit the major metropolitan centers, but uh, where you lived was relatively untouched and you live your life relatively the same way, you go hunt for food, you do all the stuff you were doing anyway. I mean, it's debatable whether you would ever really need an AR. And the reason why I own an AR is because I'm always going to live in a place where there's a lot of other people, unfortunately. And so what that means is I need to be ready to uh, address the issue because a lot of people means a lot of different problems. But if you live where this gentleman lives, it's debatable whether you would ever need to make a gun into a sort of a tactical tryhard rifle. That being said, if I was stuck with this collection here, I would probably take that Browning AB3, the 30 6 this gun right here. It looks like it's got the uh, shortest barrel of all of them all, which means it's going to be probably the lightest. I would take the Vortex scope right here and plop it on top of that. Um, then what I would do is I'd put on a throw lever. I would probably even do a top mounted red dot, probably a Romeo 5, just for fun. Um, and then, yeah, I would get really good at reloading 30 out 6 rounds. So um, you never know, right? You never know who's going to stumble onto your property, who's going to stumble, stumble into your home, or what you're going to stumble into in the wilderness. Um, allegedly... One of these rifle scopes has seen a giant, uh, not a Bigfoot, a giant. So, and uh, knowing this gentleman, it's not even, I, I totally believe it. So, um, overall, I mean, these guns are fun. Obviously, this is a hunting family. He specifically put here in the notes, please don't include the fact that I have a Turkish shotgun. Well, there you go. That's super embarrassing, and you should feel bad forever if you own a Turkish shotgun. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to the next one overall. Uh, Mr. Canadian. Uh, very good. Very good collection. Oh, man. Oh, my community is uh, really not not doing well. Not doing well today, guys. Um, <laughs> this is from a, a, a no guns in my in my community. He insisted he threatened my family if I didn't uh, post this, actually. So let's go over what we got here. I don't I don't know what he's threatening me with, but he did threaten my family. We've got an M1 Garand bayonet uh, attached to a um, whatever that is i don't i don't know what that is we've got a uh, a bb gun from bass pro shop top of the line uh on that he's got a pocket knife bayonet which he's got it he's got a bayonet over here so if you're gonna do this do it right what is going on of course he's got um, you know trump 2020 hat of course so that's uh, the kind of community i have we have journals uh, for for firearm policy this is the best submission yet Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I believe this is my last submission. If you submitted a rifle and it didn't make it, I apologize. Uh, that will definitely make it into the next one. This is, uh, we're starting with the Ripper's TV gun and we're ending with the Ripper's TV gun. I don't know what this guy does for work, but man, hire me, please. Okay, clearly you make good money. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's an MP5. In my opinion, when it comes to having a tool for home defense or, or self-defense or end of the world or whatever or boogaloo um the mp5 it ain't it okay this is not a gun that's going to be your first choice if you look outside and you need to escape you need to leave town and everything's on fire and there's zombies everywhere or liberals or whatever you're probably going to want to take your ar you're probably not going to want to take this if you're going on a grocery tr store uh, run to walmart or whatever you're not going to want to take this either this gun has a very niche role now, what's great about the MP5 and the way he's got it configured here, this could be configured to be very compact. That's really good. You should take advantage of that. Brass Facts talks about this way more eloquently than I ever could, but he talks about the idea of the PDW, or as I like to call it, the transitionary firearm. Here's how the idea goes, okay? 
Obviously, right now in America, things aren't great, but <laughs> most of us are going to get by just fine carrying our Glocks and our SIGs or whatever and conceal carrying, right? Things are not so bad that we need to have really anything more than that. The chances of violence are still, at this point, very, very, very low. But as America descends into a third world country, a shadow of what it used to be, the need for better guns being on us at all times is going to go up and up and up gradually over time very slowly and so having guns that are more like this you know three points of contact uh, you're gonna want to carry these more and more however things are not going to be so bad that you're going to want to be open carrying your 16 inch rifle that's where guns like this come in this is a gun that you could easily fit into a backpack, a normal size backpack, a normal size messenger bag, and it's going to be a lot better than your handgun. Now, granted, it's still shooting 9mm, but what you gain is a massive advantage in terms of accuracy, okay? Now, if you're going to be making a bad gun like that, the, or excuse me, the Honey Badger was specifically designed to replace the MP5 SD. If you're looking for a compact gun, if you're really looking to optimize sort of the, the PDW, the CMMG Dissonant is probably going to be one of your best options. Um, and there's a myriad of other 300 blackout rifles that are, or excuse me, pistols that are going to do that job a lot better, in my opinion. Now, this isn't bad because Rippers, he's already bought this. He's already done. He's already made that, uh, made that choice. So here's what I would say. If I'm Rippers, I'm going to put a red dot on top. Okay, probably just a Romeo 5. I know it's ironic. He can, let's be honest, he can afford a T2. I'd put a name point T2 on top, okay? Um, and then what I would do is I would look into Vertex bags or maybe even 511. See if you can find a bag dedicated to this. And then, in my opinion, that MP5, it should be married to that bag. Okay, if you're going cryptid hunting in the woods, this is not a gun you want. If you're, you know, concealed carrying to a birthday party, this is not the gun you want. If there's riots outside, this is not the gun you want. This gun's going to be very niche. It's going to be his trans transitionary firearm if i'm in charge of his life and his firearms decisions that's what i would do um and maybe get a light on on it if you can again i'm not sure if that's necessary um maybe it is maybe it's not if you can get it on there great if not who cares um I, i'm sure this gun's a real joy to shoot roller delayed guns have very low recoil um very low recoil impulse i'm sure this thing's reliable i'm sure it's fine it's just definitely not my first choice it's not even my first choice for nine millimeters i think uh bnt is going to provide better options if you're looking for a nine millimeter smg but anyway guys it's going to conclude it for this week's rifle roast again uh, in the description there's going to be a google drive go ahead and submit your guns if you would like keep in mind i'm always going to keep it anonymous unless specifically stated otherwise or i just feel like bullying rippers uh, in in the description you're also going to get a uh, coupon code to barnabas clothing there they are a christian apparel store um, they are the first official sponsor of mine so that's pretty cool so go in the description if you want to support me and support good christian clothing uh, go uh, use that discount code there the discount code is going to be saint 10 and again as always go buy some stickers from civilian expedition outfitters you guys love you guys have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day